for starters, here in the Midwest, we've had now two years of major heat stress. And we realized that something has to be done for producers to give them some idea how much stress their animals are experiencing and possibly what to do about that. I work with a couple of other researchers in the field that have all developed indices of, of heat stress that they've published. And the heat stress index that we incorporated into the app has been around for 50 years, but producers simply don't use it. In the past, you, get, you had a chart that you could look at and get some idea about what's going on with the animal, but they simply didn't use it. And, and these people were all fairly frustrated that, you know, here they've developed these things and they have they had no mechanism for getting it to the public. And so a colleague of mine, Bob Weber, who used to be here at the University of Missouri, who's now at Kansas State, said one day, he says, well, why don't, why don't you, we develop a smartphone app for heat stress for cattle that would provide them with some ideas of what how, how to deal with that heat stress. So that's what started it all. Basically what happens is the producer uh, goes to their location. They either enter their zip code into the app the first thing that comes up, or it uh, links in via GPS linkage. It then pulls in weather data from the closest weather site, okay, and that being temperature, air temperature, and humidity uh, for that particular hour of the day. Then they're able to put in things like whether they're beef or dairy, whether they are grazing, or whether they are confined, whether they're healthy or sick. All of those changes, each time they go through one of these, you get a different algorithm, a different equation that calculates a different heat stress index. Obviously the dairy are more sensitive to heat, for example, than the beef. And so their index is gonna, is gonna pop up there into a danger or emergency level much sooner than the beef animals would. At the end then of all that, they get a heat stress index and it then takes them automatically to suggestions on how to deal with that heat stress. You know, when during the day might you, ha you work with the animals should you work with the animals to prevent heat stress, potential diet adjustments and that sort of thing. Things that you can get on the internet, but again, this puts it in front of them while they're standing there. Now that's the first level of the app. That only gives them some idea about what the level of heat stress is for their herd. Well, the problem is, is that individual animals in the herd could have different levels, different sensitivities to heat stress. And so what the next level is, is to build into this a, a timer, okay? They touch the timer and the clock starts running and then they collect respiration rates using the flank movement uh, as many as they want. It could be three, it could be 10, it could be 30 or whatever. How many, how many they can get well without, uh, you know, without any problems. And then they stop the timer. It asks them how many breaths, you put that in and it calculates for them breaths per minute. The beauty of that is you only have to have one hand available to do this sort of thing. You don't have to be, you know, going back to some sort of stopwatch and turning that and then doing this and doing that, then calculating the thing and that sort of thing. So you get breaths per minute and then it allows you to enter the breaths per minute for that animal and that time of day and the weather conditions, the temperature and humidity into a server here at the University of Missouri that we maintain. They can then go into this in the future or have, whenever they want and pull up information on their animals to see how, you know, animal number 100 did what their respiration, make, their respiration rate could be like 120. Whereas animal, animal 50 might have a respiration rate of like 70 breaths per minute. And so then they would know that at that particular level of heat stress, this animal over here is gonna be much more heat stressed than another one. And they can then deal with those animals in different ways. It could be that they would provide them with more cooling, you know, through sprays or misters, fans and that sort of thing to allow them a tool to be able to make some more intelligent decisions than what they've had currently available. The other thing that this allows us to do is with their permission and only with their permission, it allows us here at the University of Missouri to access that information. And so this would allow us to collect that information and modify and improve over time what the feedback is for them. Then we will also be able to work with the producers you know, somebody, when we were first discussing this with people, they said, oh, so what you're talking about is extension in a smartphone. I said, yeah, that's basically it. You know, this day and time where extension funds are becoming less and less, we need some other way of getting to the producers, of talking with the producers, uh, without having to travel out there, you know, and be at their farm. So this would allow us a way, again, only with their permission, of accessing and seeing how their animals are doing 
and hopefully being able to provide them with some suggestions on how to work with their particular group of animals. Each site is different. And so this would allow us to have that connection that could work with them into the future. On top of that, so then, so why is this an important tool? Well, again, it allows them to determine the level of heat stress in their animals much better than what they can do now and provides them with some feedback and much more feedback if they go to the, to the website or if they go to us and work with us on this. And this is, is gonna be a national thing. We are hoping to make it international for countries like Australia that have a lot, a, a huge amount of beef and dairy production uh, and a lot of heat stress as well to work with them as well. So at this point, we're not you know, completely sure how much this will uh, expand. Uh, hopefully it'll go a great deal. One of the things that we'd like to have is a way of recording body temperature on these animals, developing transmitters that could be put in the animal that would automatically send a body temperature. Now, the problem with that is that that's at a cost. You know, doing respiration rate is free. Uh, that makes it a very inexpensive operation. If you had inexpensive temperature transmitters that could go in the animal, that would send it to the app, that would be, that would be fantastic. What we would like to have, our dream, is to have chips, temperature chips that we could put in the animal that would send it to an attachment that would go into your phone that would send that information directly into the phone. Uh, and then and then to a database or a server that you could then access later. And you, you remove then the necessity of having a computer hook up and all this sort of thing, and you, and you go through the app that's on the phone to gather that information.